Now, you know, one part of it is looking after your own. It's in a way very natural. I think what has also changed with us, which the world has taken note, is we have started to also respond to the needs of other people. It's in Sri Lanka, in Maldives. But just see, just a few weeks ago, what happened in Turkey. When the earthquake hit Turkey and Syria, literally, within a matter of not even hour, well, I would say an hour, a little more than an hour, already the Prime Minister said, you know, you need to get a force out there. We need to, because we have, literally, within two days, we were there. Sometime, look at the YouTubes on what the Turkish public says about the Indians who are there running a hospital. They're actually running a hospital in a school out there. Now, that, those are the kinds of things today that shape the image of India. In my three, because, uh, you know, we, every September, there's this UN General Assembly. Last September, a bunch of countries actually came to us and said, you know, we'd like an event where we want to tell you what we think about it. Because we are all recipients of your vaccines and vaccine rights. And you should, you should hear one, you know, hear them. So really, I would say, you, you cannot be unmoved by what you said. The foreign minister of Jamaica, who's a lady, she actually says, I have vaccine my three inside me. That is the kind of impact today that we are making in the world. Two more examples. Why the world today thinks of us differently. You saw that during the Ukraine conflict, we came under a lot of pressure from some Western countries that while they wanted to keep their freedom to uh, buy energy from Russia on terms and pace which they wanted, they wanted us really to sacrifice the interests of the Indian consumer. No, we stood firm, we stood firm public. And I, I would say this to you, you know, across Asia, across Africa, across Latin America, a lot of other foreign ministers, sometimes even prime ministers and presidents, basically told me or told prime minister, saying, look, we admire what you did. Many of us had that feeling. Not all of us had the ability or the courage to say that. That is also something today the world takes. So when you stand firm on tough issues at a global level, the kind of, uh, I would say, uh, the kind of respect that you generate is actually very, very different. How a country behaves when its security is threatened, when its people are attacked, that too is a judge of our character. So if you compare what we did after Mumbai 26 level with what we did at Uri and Balakot, the world draws a message from it. See, when you see our soldiers after 2020 deployed in the northern borders, in the Himalayas against China, and you compare today how we are supporting them, sustaining them, making sure they have the capabilities. The world remembers, how were these people in 1962? How are they today? This is also something, the willingness to stand up, stand up to coercion, stand up to pressure, stand up when your uh, national security and your core interests are at stake. When it comes to disasters, because in this, as climate change increases, there'll be more and more disasters. India was the first country to propose a global coalition for disaster resilience. So we are no longer today the receiver of ideas or the receiver of assistance or the receiver of, you know, what other people give to the rest of the world. We are also today a contributor. We are a giver. We are a provider. We are a responder. That is today the changing image of India. But in the final analysis, what the world thinks about India is determined by two factors. One, the buzz, the energy, what they sense is happening in India. And most of all today, this is visible in the digital domain. You know, the scale of what we have done digitally. When I, I go around talking to people, saying, you know, we deliver four to 80 crore people. We give money in the bank accounts of 40 crore people. Even the Ujwala, the gas cylinder, is given to 8 crore people. The number of uh, family members who have benefited from housing provided by government is 13 crore. So these are, for the world, fantastic figures. And the countries with less population marvel at the figures. But there are many countries who say, you know, we have the same problem. I've actually had a president who made me sit for half an hour and made me talk about all of this because he said, you know, I have the same leakage issue in, in my country. So when I explained to him how leakage in India was cut, how those days when, you know, 100 rupees left India, uh, left Delhi and 15 rupees reached the recipient, how that era is over, it's something which is of enormous interest. The other, of course, is people today see the personality of India. The fact that we today are culturally proud, we are not today trying to be an imitation of other cultures, that whether it is our food, whether it is our speech, whether it is our culture, whether it is our traditions, it is something that we project which we, for which we demand a rightful place. And that I can tell you, the rise of a civilization again on the world stage, that is something which the world knows about.